this is the second half of the video on um, the absorption of carbohydrates the previous one was focused on the digestion but this one will be talking mostly about the absorption of carbohydrates so let's begin the carbohydrates as we discussed in the last video are absorbed as monosaccharides and the process of digestion is where the polysaccharides or disaccharides are degraded or hydrolyzed into monosaccharides and these monosaccharides they can be absorbed by passive diffusion facilitated diffusion or active transport um, and if you don't know the basics behind each of these forms of transport passive diffusion is the movement of molecules from high to low concentration it doesn't require energy or a carrier protein and it's the slowest process of the three facilitated diffusion is also from high to low concentration and no energy is required but you require a carrier protein or a transmembrane protein and this process is faster in comparison to diffusion passive diffusion uh, and finally we have active transport which is the movement of molecules from low to high concentration and it requires energy in the form of ATP and a carrier protein is required uh, and this mechanism of transport is the fastest so when it comes to the absorption of the monosaccharides or glucose specifically there are various transporters so um, as you know glucose is a polar molecule so it can't pass through the lipid bilayer only non-polar molecules can pass through the lipid bilayer so there are two types of transporters for the transport of glucose and of other monosaccharides as well um, so you can have sodium dependent glucose transporters which require sodium and you can have sodium independent glucose transporters as well so first we'll talk about the sodium dependent transporter um, it's a form of co-transport because what happens is on this transporter first sodium binds onto it and then this causes a structural change in the transport of protein and then this allows glucose or galactose to bind and sodium is then transported across the cell membrane from a high to low concentration and at the same time glucose is transported against the concentration gradient into the proximal tubule epithelial cell so both sodium and glucose are transported into the proximal tubule epithelial cell but the sodium goes from a high to low concentration and the glucose goes uh, against the concentration gradient so from low to high and from here then the ATP is used to pump sodium out via a sodium potassium ATPase pump and while this is happening glucose simply diffuses down its concentration gradient into the interstitium um, with a channel protein which we'll discuss shortly but the reason why we pump sodium back out uh, into the interstitium interstitium is because of the sodium itself is osmotically active because it has a positive charge and if it stays in the proximal tubule epithelial cell it will cause osmot uh, osmotic flow <coughs> into the proximal tubule epithelial cell and also it inhibits a lot of enzymes as well so that's why sodium is pumped out but at the same time glucose uh, passes out via facilitated diffusion uh, into the interstitium uh, while this sodium is being pumped out and the next part which we're going to discuss is the sodium independent transporters the final part of the video um, and these transported are used for facilitated diffusion and they are numbered GLUT1 to 14 so you can have GLUT1, GLUT2 all the way to 14 and some examples are GLUT1 which is present in almost all the cells and most mostly in the red blood cells you have GLUT2 which transports glucose in the blood and GLUT5 which transports fructose um, and these are basically sort of like channel proteins which allow glucose or various monosaccharides look you can see GLUT5 here has a high affinity for fructose so therefore various a um, 
monosaccharides and we discussed here that in the previous part that glucose passes out uh, th down its concentration gradient while sodium is being pumped out and it actually glucose diffuses down its concentration using a sodium independent transporter so I hope this makes sense if it doesn't write a comment below and I'll do my best to reply to you as soon as possible thanks for watching